Looking for the best PC build with the Ryzen 7 7700X? The 7700X is a chip designed for high performance in gaming and productivity tasks. It's noticeably faster than the Ryzen 5 7600X, and it comes very close to matching the prowess of the newer 9700X. It features 8 cores and 16 threads, running at an impressive 5.4GHz boost clock, and the fact that it can be found for a cheaper price these days is another win. In this video, I'll be putting that performance to good use by utilizing the 7700X in different budgets for a budget, a mid-range, and a premium PC build. The budget build offers strong performance for entry-level gaming, then the best value mid-range build offers the perfect price-to-performance ratio, and the premium high-end build goes all out for the ultimate experience. Each PC component that will be mentioned here is in the description along with its price. Let's get to it first with the best budget build. The Ryzen 7 7700X is a mid-range CPU, but that works well in our favor for a budget build. There's very little competition in this price range, as Intel's 15th gen lineup doesn't impress much in terms of raw performance. It's also worth noting that the newer Ryzen 9000 chips aren't that big of an upgrade in terms of gaming performance. That leaves us with two choices for most budget builds. The Ryzen 5 7600X and the Ryzen 7 7700X. Both are great choices, with the 7700X being a bit more expensive. However, that higher price tag is put to good use, as the 7700X is faster in both productivity apps and games. In the long term, you'll benefit more from the 7700X. For the motherboard, I chose the modest ASRock B650M-H. Unlike high-end full ATX boards, this micro-ATX option isn't exactly the flashiest board out there. However, you're looking at DDR5 support at up to 6400 megatransfers per second. That's all you really need for Ryzen 7000, as 6400 megatransfers per second tends to be the sweet spot. Other than that, it has an 8-phase power delivery configuration, two M2 slots, one of which supports PCIe 5.0 and features a heatsink, and four USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports on the rear. It also features a BIOS flashback button and supports ASRock's Easy BIOS Update functionality. While it's missing Wi-Fi, RGB, and some other flashier features, it's a solid board for the price that won't bottleneck performance. These savings also allow me to spend a bit on a great GPU. For the RAM, I decided to keep things simple with the Kingston Fury Beast 16GB kit. This is a DDR5 kit clocked at 6000 megatransfers per second with a 36 cas latency. Again, it doesn't feature any RGB, but it has the speed and reliability to keep our performance in games consistent. While it's not exactly 6400 megatransfers per second, it overclocks well, and the heatsink has a low profile. Storage-wise, I landed on the Silicon Power UD90 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD. I recommend this drive, as it's the best entry-level PCIe 4 SSD on the market. You get access to blazing fast speeds and decent capacity at a cheap price. It's a DRAM-less SSD, but that fortunately does not affect load times in games at all. To cool the Ryzen 7 7700X, I went with the Thermalright Phantom Spirit 120 SE air cooler. In my opinion, this is the best air cooler on the market, as it rivals many higher-end coolers at half the price. It has a beefy dual-tower design with two 120mm ARGB fans, and the noise levels never get too high. For the price, it's hard to beat. This is exactly why it's such a respected cooler among hardware enthusiasts and review outlets. Since I'm targeting 1080p and a bit of 1440p gaming with this build, the NVIDIA RTX 4060 was the immediate choice for the graphics card. It's got 8GB of GDDR6 VRAM, a boot clock of 2.5GHz, and a respectable TDP of 115 watts. All of those numbers translate to great performance without a ridiculously high power draw. Paired with the 7700X, it can deliver stable 60 to 70 FPS in modern titles such as Elden Ring, Black Myth Wukong, and Cyberpunk in 1080p at high settings. 
You can even get away with some 1440p gaming if you're fine with medium settings. Finally, if you play competitive games, this is an excellent choice, as you can achieve high frame rates in games like Fortnite at 1080p. As for the specific variant, I chose the MSI Ventus 2X Black Edition. This is a sleek looking card with an all black design and a sturdy metal backplate. The cooler is well built and the fans never get too loud. For the price, it's a great looking and performing card that will be reliable for years to come. Powering all these components is the MSI MAG A650BN 650W power supply. It's an 80 plus bronze certified PSU with nicely sleeved cables and a fan that doesn't produce much noise. Considering the entire system is so power efficient, 650 watts is more than enough and actually leaves a bit of headroom for small upgrades. Finally, all these components sit inside the compact Zalman S2 ATX mid-tower case. This chassis features a tempered glass side panel, an industrial front metal grille for great airflow, a separate enclosure for the power supply, and three pre-installed case fans. For the price, it's an excellent case that provides plenty of airflow and a minimal aesthetic. Putting all of the components together, we have a very robust gaming PC that comes in at just $900. It'll be more than capable for any modern game at 1080p today, and the performance will remain good for several years down the line. On top of that, we have great cooling, excellent power efficiency, and a sleek, minimal appearance. Before we continue to the best value build, it would really help us continue making more videos if you support us by just hitting the like button and subscribe, or even with a comment so that I know if you like it or if there's something I can do to improve next time. I promise it costs nothing, just a few seconds. So now let's continue with the best value PC build with the 7700X. If you're looking to maximize performance without breaking the bank, the Ryzen 7 7700X is an excellent starting point. Because of its high performance and affordable price, this is a chip that pairs well with both budget and high-end components. The performance scales well with more powerful GPUs, and if you throw in some fast RAM and storage, you're in for an excellent gaming experience. To get started with this value-focused build, I went with the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi-Fi for the motherboard. This board is a great choice as it features Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3, dual PCIe Gen 4 M2 slots, and beefy heatsinks for the VRM and chipset. You also get a 14-phase power delivery configuration, meaning overclocking is possible with the Ryzen 7 7700X. It also supports 256GB of DDR5 memory at 7200 megatransfers per second, meaning you can pick any high-end DDR5 kit off the shelves and be good to go. The only thing missing here is PCIe Gen 5 support on the M2 slots. However, this is not a big deal breaker considering how expensive PCIe Gen 5 SSDs are and that they barely affect gaming performance. For RAM, I chose a relatively high-end kit. The Corsair Vengeance RGB 32GB kit is clocked at DDR5 6400 speeds and has a 36 cast latency. If you're a fan of RGB lighting, you'll appreciate this kit as much as I do, thanks to the subtle glow it provides inside any case. It's fast, looks great, and is not as expensive as other high-end RGB kits. As for storage, the Western Digital Black SN770 was an easy pick. I chose the 1TB version to save a bit of money towards the overall build, but the 2TB version isn't all that pricey either. This SSD lacks a DRAM cache, but makes up for it with an efficient HMB buffer that doesn't sacrifice load times in games. It's only a bit pricier than some entry-level SSDs, but has much better performance and reliability. When it comes to cooling, the Ryzen 7 7700X doesn't need an over-the-top expensive cooler, so the Corsair IQ H100i RGB Elite is a great choice. For those of you who prefer the look of an AIO over air coolers, this one is cheap, features RGB lighting on the pump, and comes with two 120mm fans that never get too loud. This cooler does a great job of keeping temperatures in check, and it looks great while doing so. 
For the graphics card, as we're focusing on 1440p gaming with this build, I went with the RTX 4070. This GPU is a better choice than something like a Radeon RX 7900 XT, mainly because it has lower power consumption and features like DLSS and NVIDIA frame generation. AMD cards also have similar features, but the quality of upscaling and frame generation is a bit better with NVIDIA. As for the raw performance, the 4070 is a beast. It easily handles all modern titles at 1440p with high frame rates, and the 7700X does a great job of making sure that there's no bottleneck. You can expect well above 70 to 80 FPS at high settings in games like Cyberpunk 2077 and Black Myth Wukong. Competitive titles work even better, allowing you to take advantage of high refresh rate monitors thanks to numbers above 144 FPS. The specific variant I chose is the Gigabyte Windforce OC. This version of the 4070 features a beefy triple slot design with a well-built cooler. It features an all-black design, a full metal backplate, and low temperatures. Powering all these incredible components is the highly reliable Seasonic Focus GX 750 watt power supply. This is a fully modular 80 plus gold unit, and it's backed by a generous 10 year warranty. Seasonic is considered to be the best in the power supply game, and this is why I recommend this unit if you care about longevity. To house all of these components, I chose the extravagant Montec XR case. It comes out of the box with three addressable RGB fans pre-installed, a dual chamber design to keep the power supply separate, and great airflow. The dual tempered glass along with RGB lighting makes this a very unique looking case, and it's hard to believe it costs under $100. With all these excellent components together, you get a fantastic looking machine that can handle any game you throw at it. 1440p high refresh rate gaming is not a problem with this build, and the AM5 platform paired with our 750 watt power supply gives you plenty of room for upgrades. Overall, it's an excellent blend of value, performance, and looks, with a total cost of around $1,800. Finally, let's take a look at my suggestions for the best premium build with the Ryzen 7 7700X. While the Ryzen 7 7700X isn't by any means the most high-end chip on the market, it manages to work well in premium build configurations. This is because when you're playing games at 4K, most titles are more GPU bound than CPU bound. You just need a CPU that's strong enough to keep up with the graphical horsepower, and the 7700X does that quite well. It's also a great pick for productivity and streaming, which is something you might care about if you're spending a lot on a PC. To kick things off with this high-end build, I chose the ASRock X870 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi motherboard. This is an X870 chipset, which means you get access to features such as PCIe Gen 5, USB 4, and Wi-Fi 7. Needless to say, the connectivity on this board is fantastic. The 17-phase power delivery system is also impressive, and will allow you to overclock the 7700X with ease. In total, you get three M2 slots, and one of them supports PCIe Gen 5. You also get a PCIe Gen 5x15 slot for the graphics card, meaning it's a solid board for future upgrades. Finally, it supports DDR5 kits at up to 8000 megatransfers per second with overclocking, so you're all set if you care about overclocking your RAM kits. Speaking of which, for memory, I went with the G-Skill Trident Z5 RGB 32GB kit. This kit is clocked at 6400 megatransfers per second and has a low 32 cast latency. It's fast, overclocks very well, and features very tasteful RGB lighting. With its speed and great looks, it fits right in with our premium theme. Of course, that whole high-end thing we have going on doesn't stop at storage either. I chose one of the best high-performance SSDs on the market, the Western Digital Black SN850X. This 2TB drive has a 2GB DDR4 DRAM cache, blazing fast read and write speeds, and fantastic reliability. While it is quite high-end, it's not that expensive for a 2TB PCIe Gen 4 drive. 
Since we're going to be focusing on 4K gaming with this build, I went with the RTX 4080 Super for the graphics card. I chose this over the RTX 4090, as that card has gone well beyond the $2000 mark, and it's not reasonable to pay that much for a card considering the 5090 is coming soon in 2025. With that being said, the 4080 Super is not going to disappoint anyone. It easily handles any game you throw at it in 4K, and if you enable DLSS, it can even handle ray tracing at higher settings. It's a very well-rounded card for the price, and there's no competition in its price bracket. The specific variant I chose is the Zotac Gaming Trinity. It's a unique looking card because of its shape, which slightly resembles a spaceship. You get some very tasteful RGB lighting as a bonus, and the cooler is well built to handle the raw power of the 4080 Super. It never gets too loud, and the three fans ensure temperatures never get too high. For the power supply, I'm recommending the Seasonic Focus GX 750 watt here. It's an 80 plus gold certified fully modular unit, and it comes from the most reliable name in the business. Seasonic backs all their PSUs with a 10 year warranty, so you don't need to worry about reliability here. As the 4080 Super only pulls a maximum of 320 watts at full load, 750 watts is more than enough in our case. Finally, all of these components sit inside the iconic Lian Li O11 Vision. This is a critically acclaimed case because of its dual chamber design, massive tempered glass panels on the top, side, and front, and fantastic airflow. Throw in a couple of RGB fans into this thing, and it becomes one of the best looking cases on the market. It's a bit pricey, but well worth it for such a well put together chassis. By the end, we have a very powerful high-end machine that eats up any game you throw at it. The 7700X does well here, as the 8 cores and 5.4 GHz boost clock handle multitasking and gaming very well. The 4080 Super does a great job of keeping our frame rates high, while the fast RAM and storage keep our rig feeling snappy. For around $2600, this is an absolute beast of a machine. Thanks for watching! I hope my suggestions have inspired you to create your own Ryzen 7 7700X build. Remember, you can check the prices for each component mentioned in the description below. And if you're interested in more PC building suggestions and hardware reviews, be sure to check out more of my videos. Before you go, please don't forget to like this video, subscribe to stay updated, and let me know your opinion and suggestions in the comments. See you in the next one.